Is there a practice from the way of Jesus to index our hearts away from their captivity to ideology and toward freedom of the way of Jesus? To, in Paul's language, to demolish strongholds of the enemy in our heart. Yes, there are many, but at the top of that list is Scripture. Scripture is a library of writings that are both human and divine that together tell a unified story that leads us to Jesus. Jesus himself was a rabbi or, in our language, a Bible teacher. His mind was saturated in Scripture. He would teach it, quote it, pray it, obey it, live it. He was obedient to Scripture as a form of surrender to the Father's love. For him, this is really clear when you read Jesus, it was way more than like interesting literature. It was God-breathed truth. In reading Moses or David or Isaiah, he was reading God's word over his life. He would say things like, the Holy Spirit spoke by the mouth of David and quote from the Psalms. He would say, God said and quote from Moses. He would say, scripture cannot be broken. He would say, not one dot of the I or cross of the T will ever be broken until all of these things are accomplished. And then God raised Jesus from the dead as God's vindication of Jesus' teachings as reality. Just to clarify the the moral logic here, we do not trust in Jesus because of the Bible. We do not believe what we believe about Jesus because I read it in the Bible. We trust in the Bible, that's backwards logic, this is the circular reasoning. We trust in the Bible because of Jesus, because there was a man who three days later came back from the dead after saying things that no one had really ever said and offering a vision of life that was without parallel and still is without parallel, we think, in human history. Then he came back from the dead, and this man taught the Bible, loved the Bible, and said this was scripture. So we're like, okay, we're... (laughs) We have lots of questions about the Bible, but we follow you, Jesus, and so help us and have mercy and let's, let's get into this and do it. For us as followers of Jesus, I love the Bridgetown, like, almost clap. It's like, we're, no, it's like, no, we're not asking for a clap. That's such as, we're like charismatic, but not really Pentecostal, but we're Portlanders, but it's winter. We're like, yeah, that's us. I love you. I love you so much. For us as followers of Jesus, our aim isn't just to read scripture or even to know it or even to agree with it, but to obey it as an act of faith in Jesus. But more than that, scripture for us is a vehicle for abiding in Jesus. Jesus, in one of my favorite passages, said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. He's talking about the flow of consciousness through our mind, our inner woman or man. All of us have that flow of consciousness. All of us have words or ideas that flow through our mind or inner being all day long. To let Jesus' word abide in us is to let his words, his ideas, his truth, his love and wisdom flow through our mind stream all day long and give shape to the inner architecture of our heart. It's about consciousness. Our apprenticeship to Jesus, therefore, must curate our mind stream, must begin, not end, but begin in our mind. It must guard our mind against the ideas and ideologies that are set against the knowledge of God, which for us in our age means strict discipline around our phones and social media and the internet and TV in quality, frequency, and moral tenor. But we must also guide our mind into truth, not just by reading, but by living in Scripture, in the flow of our consciousness. There's no right way to read Scripture. You can read a small section, slowly and prayerfully, what some call Lectio Divina, or you can read or listen to a large swath of Scripture at once. You can do it alone. You can do it with the community. That, by the way, is how much of Scripture was designed to be experienced in a community sitting through an entire literary work in one sitting. You can study it, you can analyze it one word at a time, you can listen to teachings on it, you can memorize it, you can pray it, all sorts of ways to engage scripture. We have a practice for you that you can work through with your Bridgetown community up at bridgetown.church future as we continue to develop our rule of life. 
We have multiple levels of engagement for you. Everything we do is invitational. We make invitations, you make decisions. But the baseline rule of life that we wanna get to down the road is that we invite you to now, and, or at least to work toward, is to commit to the daily reading of scripture and to self-imposed limits on screen time and intake of entertainment and quantity, frequency, and moral.